everybody. Good evening. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, uh, as I was listening to the opening, as you were listening to it, I heard the line, and now we know. And, and we do know. Now we do know it's time for us to come together. We do know it's time for us to really experience the love and the connectedness that we all share. You know, any doubts we had about that being the experience of truth, of love, are just fading away and we can't afford any more to wait, to wait to have that experience of love, to wait to have that experience of, of connectedness, of, of to know that no separation exists in, in all of us, in the dolphins and the whales. I mean, I say this so often, but it's just time and it's time now and that momentum is picking up. It's picking up for all of us. It's picking up all over the globe. And tonight again we have with us people whose lives again are dedicated to having that experience, having that experience, and sharing that experience with others. We have Carolyn Kleefeld, who's an acclaimed poet and philosopher and artist. Her new book, The Alchemy of Possibility, is basically, it's, it's a handbook, it's a guidebook for universal growth. And in that, her, her art, her paintings are, are scattered throughout out the book, and it's just magnificent synthesis with her poetry and with her philosophy into expressing that love and that oneness and that, that moment of, of consciousness where love really exists, where the moment of truth is now. So she's with us tonight, and we have eight to ten of her magnificent paintings, the, the real paintings here with us tonight and we're going to try to show you as many of them as we can. And we also have Lesia with us tonight and her gang of girls. Uh, we have, she's a, an international award-winning singer-songwriter. Her music, uh, Lesia's music, has been performed by artists and individual artists and, and choirs all over the world. Her new album, It's All uh, How You See Things, is just, just an extraordinary piece of love and work. And she is a voice and music teacher, and she works with you know, all sorts of teenagers, and tonight we have with us, as backed up, as, as uh, a harmony with her, six beautiful little teenage girls from the, I think, 10 to 15. So it's just, it's a show where there's just so much love coming from so many different directions, but all ending up in experience of connectedness, an experience that we're all one. So whatever differences we thought we had when we came into this moment, when, wherever you're watching the show, throughout the world, wherever it is, Let's come together. There's no difference between us, no color, no race, no religion, no nothing can separate us for this next hour at least. Let's let the love of Carol and Leslie and the girls and myself bring us all more into that experience. So as we normally do at this time to touch that, to come into a place of quiet, join me in a short meditation and then we'll have just a magnificent show with art and music and basically all that directed at that love, at that oneness. So please join me. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and I'm going to announce it as Leslie and the girls, but hopefully you saw everyone's name because everyone is special to us here, but their names were on the opening credits. But just we have so much to do tonight, I didn't want to go over them all. But on the opening credits, all the girls were listed. So the first song that Leslie and the girls are going to do is Miracle, and all the songs have been written by Leslie. So whenever we're ready, please. Oh 
Wow. Thank you, Leslie and the girls. Thank you. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. So what's the miracle in your life? Well, um, to begin with being here tonight with you and all these wonderful people and gives me a chance to thank uh, Andy Lakey and Linda Van Allen and Francis Jeffrey and Patricia Holt. It's like she won the Academy <laughs> Awards. She's thanking everybody. Well, because Coming they're like... Coming on Bridging Heaven and Earth is not well, like... <laughs> what, I, what I mean is that they they have been like angels and envo envoy angels in my life. And so they, they, they're miracles in themselves, you know, bringing me and helping me to be here. And so I just feel like our relationships and love and meaningful relationships we have with people are like um, miracles in themselves, you know, that the universe brings us these gifts and um, of people and relationships and love and connectedness as you talk about. So, yeah. so is that what like motivated you to write this new book to let that yeah. experience out to to bring your paintings and your poetry and that that experience of like you yeah. know the Zen moment of the miracle of all things that yeah I think there's um, some innate need to uh, when you work and you express you know you create these you want to communicate them to other people there's like a, that need to, to want to, to express you know the meaningful things to yourself and share it so it does come from definitely uh, you know a, a love for other people and the care for them and the sharing, you know, of what it means to get it out there, and uh, definitely, yeah. So, um, how how did it work that, that one of the ways that your love manifest was through art and painting? How did that was that was that a long-standing thing? Well, when you were two years old. You... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to um, I saw a sunbeam coming into my room, and I saw the dust particles. And as a po poetic kind of a, a you know child. I interpreted the dust particles as being like little people and then I started drawing them and I created this tribe and then I hung the pictures up all around my room and, and I started to write little stories and pretend I was sick so I could stay home from school and create these little stories, you know, so just like that was one of my little miracles that the dust particles came in and I saw them that way and I interpreted it that way and started to write about them and wrote my first book when I was like seven, seven and eight years old and illustrated it. And so, so it this, starts early who we are and right. what we need to do, you know. Our particular communications are all different and it seems to start very early. When you Did you find back. yourself like drawn away from that? Because a lot of times we know it when we were a child. Oh, definitely, yeah. So how did that how, tell us your story? Well, bit? yeah, I mean, definitely uh, the schools and what's expected of us can take, you know, definitely takes you away from all that, you know, or can. And um, so it really took many years, really, until I had the time and the space to really get back to what I had in childhood. It was sort of like the second part of my life. My kids were old enough, you know, they were 10 and 11, and they understood, and we discussed it. And I said, I need time, you know, for my work and my poetry, which was sitting in drawers, you know. And finally had, you know, the time and the space to spend my time doing that, you know. Again, because as a child I'd done it, but I, you know, had years in between where I, you know, hardly knew it existed really, you know, it was kind of, you know, I had journals and stuff, but um, I hadn't had the time, you know, to really devote myself. So did you find yourself having to like unwind a lot of stuff you had learned to get back to that child? Oh, absolutely, quality? yeah. Like um, really what I call destructuring, you know, where I got out of these habits of feeling like I couldn't um, just kind of relax and, and be in a meditative state that I always had to be doing and being and accomplishing. and. You know, I'd grown up in a very competitive kind of society, you know, and I'd been in Beverly Hills for years, and, you know, there was just emphasis on a whole way of living. But it took me years, really, to get into that meditative space where I felt, you know, I could get into a quality of life without all that acceleration and fastness. And, yeah, it's interesting. You know, so it was we, like going backwards in a way, you know, going Yeah, we back. think we have to add on, but most of the time we can. We really need to unwind. Exactly, you know? exactly, yeah. So, and now you live in like a, an, a some, somewhat Quite isolated, isolated area uh -huh. in yeah. Big Sur, California. Right, uh -huh. on the top of a mountain surrounded by the sea, and, you know, and I paint outside with these incredible views. I see the moon coming up and the sun going down, and, you know, just huge skies, and it really adds to the expansive quality, you know, that I can have in my painting because I'm totally in touch with nature, you know, on a very intimate level, which I couldn't, you know, when I lived in the city. So the work uh, kind of expresses that, you know, not having a ceiling in your head, you having your mind open, you know, and letting the energies come through you and then expressing your own personal experiences, you know, that have deep impressions and those go into the art, you know, like it's, it's a very, um, 
for me, it's, you know, a very um, meditative kind of experience. You know, it can be like an ecstatic meditation. Other times it's very laborious and hard work, you know, and the detail parts and so forth. But it expresses, my work to me expresses a way of life and a quality of life that um, is very sensorial, you know, where you're involved with color, like you have here, you know, flowers and nature and fragrance and all the senses, you know. And, um, you know, and I have themes, I have the, the lover's themes, which I see one of the paintings that's up over there is moon angels over there. And um, that expresses the beautiful nights that I have where I live, where I can swim at night and look out on the ocean and see the moon on the tides and, you know, be in touch with nature in a continual intimate kind of dialogue. And, um, and then when you stay in touch with, you know, with the wilderness on that level, then you keep that within yourself. So it's a very regenerating process. And so you use nature as like a meditative tool in a way, a way of, ex of, of experiencing and then expressing. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you describe it as the infinite or love? or? Definitely, yeah, infinity. And, and I happen to, you know, have, I have great views. So, you know, you, you feel that eternal endlessness to things, you know. And then the climate's always changing and you always see new beautiful things. And so it, it keeps you moving and changing, keeping your mind open. And... Um, Definitely, yeah. And then you see yourself reflected in nature, in the, phys in the wilderness. You see things within yourself, you know, that are the same things going on. You see your relationship to climates, you know, and how you have the same, my first book, Climates of the Mind, you know, about how you have the climates within yourself that are they're in nature. And, and just keeping in touch on that level, it's just very regenerating and, and also, um, you know, you see a, a, a certain, it's like a mirror of your soul, you know, the wilderness is like a mirror of your soul. You know, it's like there's a completeness in nature, that you, and it plays back to you, and you just feel good, you know, being in touch on that level. So, so did you, before that, that nature became that experience for you, mm -hmm. did you ever, like, pursue spiritual paths as they're known, or different meditations or anything like well, that? Well, I kind of explored on my own. I, I like to experiment. My work is all about experiment and exploration and treating life in that way, where you, um, in a way, I, I actually function opposite from what's going on, you know, in, in this country, really, because I kind of like to just let things happen and go into it on a meditative level without purpose without knowing what I'm doing and letting just let the energies and the colors the color to me expresses emotion and you know feeling and so I just kind of let the colors uh, lead me and then music is a huge part of it um, I think music is life you know and that it's all about electrical you know so the lyrics just kind of come through me and the colors and they lead me and I let them take me you know and I like to be that way about life so that you're you have continual wonder when you live that way and synchronicity that blows your mind, you know, you go, oh my God, you know, this is right, you know, because mm -hmm. of all the things that happen when you're letting the Tao, the Taoistic way lead your way. It's just like, How would you define that for well, people who are not as familiar with it as you? Yeah, well, I've just fallen into it. I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, and that's what, you know, has made it so interesting. It's, you know, I think it comes with um, seeing that, the, that uh, we are, you know, like localized personalities here on Earth. I mean, we're, our personalities, you know, we're like localized but that we're coming from that infinite place and that the sources and the energies that be come through us and we can totally trust, you know, um, that our innermost being will express itself, you know, if we're in touch on that level, that, you know, it will take us where we need to go. Um, you know, intuitively, you know, like Christian Amrita talked about, you know, the sublime intuition, you know, when you're willing to take that chance and live that way, you, there's no limit you know, to the, your experience of life. I mean, of course you'll have challenges, but it, they'll be what you're supposed to have, you know, like it'll be what you need to have in order to sculpt yourself, so to speak, you know. So in essence... So it's that trust in life, you right. know, on a basic level. That you'll, faith, you have faith, faith that you'll get you, what you need what you, when you, not, you need yeah. it, but not what you want when you want it. So you exactly. just yeah. like, let go into it. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's a lot to do with letting go, and entrusting on that deep ultimate level and letting the miracles happen and the wonder that comes with that you know it may you know may not always be uh some ideal picture but it's but then, in a way if you're in the moment you wouldn't have a picture no no because the next yeah. you're always in the moment exactly. proceeding you exactly. don't have an expectation no, you're not, not going anywhere exactly yeah so you can just let the um 
it's like a, a wonderful experiment, you know. So my paintings are the same. I let that happen with my paintings too. And do you That's make music I enjoy it so also? Much. Um, I don't. I. It's I, the way uh, you're talking about it. Like, <laughs> I know. You know. I listen to music a lot when I'm painting. Yeah. You know. It's really not. You really can't separate it. And my writing is the same way. I see. It gets like an imagistic, lyrical kind of thing. And, and like I said, I mean, it's a basic law, you know, of, of nature that everything is in, in some kind of rhythm and, and movement, you know. It's like in nature, you know, there's, no, there's a, no, no rest without pause, you know. It's, it's constantly in movement even when it's still, you know, there's a pulse. And so I see in my art all the cycles of like regular life. I mean, it's just showing me all the changes you know, if I watch it and I see, it kind of plays back to me and lets me know where I've been. And, you know, it's just, you know, a wonderful interactive mirror for your own growth, you know. This ended up being that way. I mean, I still didn't plan it. But as a child, I would, you know, draw these, these creatures that I thought I saw in the sunbeam. I'd hang them all over my bedroom. I called them nanos. Which later on, it turns out that I think that's, George Lucas made a movie about that. Yeah, it <laughs> turns out that <laughs> nano is like the smallest technology. Yeah, nano. Yeah, yeah right. smallest atom. Right. So these little particles were. So you kind of knew that. So you know, it, again, it's that intuitive thing that if you're just open, you know, right. all as the you were when you were a child, available. it's all there. Yeah, right. exactly. So I mean, a lot of people have like some sort of seeming conflict between childlike and childish. How do you do that? <laughs> they always say, I'm well, more on this childish yeah. side. Yeah, well, I don't know. I've never worried about it too much. You know, you get to a point where it's they're, they're just words, you know. And right. It's all a matter of interpretation. <laughs> so, in other yeah. words, like, your way of living is like basically a breath at a time, and then the next Yeah, breath, more and, and more and more. Letting go, letting go, letting go. To attachment, you know, just constantly mm -hmm. realizing that's a major thing that you have to do in order to be open to constant growth and constant yes. expansion. Right. Changes not holding the, on, the, not the attaching. Nature. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so are there like tools or techniques you use to do that or just stay me, one step yeah. ahead of it? Yeah. Well, you know, um, who was it? Uh, Coleman Barks. I saw a video of him doing Rumi, you know, reading Rumi. And he talked about how it's the book of life, you know, like, um, you know, the, uh, reading a lot of books and everything won't do it. It's like the experience of life that teaches you all of it. And that happens to me my, my way. And I find out later, you know, that these, all this has been written about and so forth. But I, I like to fall into things and explore and experiment. Yeah, we're saying it's yours. It's and real then I for record you. It. It's yeah, real I for you yeah, rather than exactly. somebody else. Rumi's isn't real for you until it's real for yeah, you. Yeah, you have to be able to experience something. And I think it's on a somatic level where your whole being, you know, is involved with the experience. And it's not just your eyes that see, but you go right into things, you know, and it becomes a whole, whole experience, you know. Yeah, of uh, color and so forth. And so the book basically is just an explanation or a, a statement of that, that experience, uh -huh. using words and pictures to bring that yeah. feeling out, in a way. Yeah, it was like a recording, you know, with my journals written over 10 years. And I had no idea I was writing a book. So again, I did things backwards. I just let things happen. I was writing my journals, reading the I Ching, and, um, and then I was painting and I was writing poetry. So it just all happened on its own. It had a life of its own, so to speak. And then um, I thought about, well, why not have a book? And then people were very enthusiastic about it. I had people just, oh, right, you know, loving it. So they inspired me. And, um, and then it ended up going into chapters and turning into this like a recording of change and transformation and, and all the learnings I was had, having at that time, you know. But it didn't happen from that purposeful thing, you know. It was like letting life happen to you, you know, which is where all the wonder comes from, you know. And so I think of myself as, as a Magoo creature sometimes, you know, that I kind of stumble do, into, yes, into yeah, grace. Like a Peter and... Sellers kind of a person, you know. Where you just sort of fall in, and you go, oh, how did I, you know, make, how did I get here? You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's always the case. I but mean, it's wonderful it's, that yeah, way. Yeah, I love living so that essence, way. So in essence, I mean, it's like with, with Christians talking about it's being born again, but there's a different interpretation. But yeah. every day you wake up, and who knows? Exactly. I mean, or every, really, you know, every yeah. minute, who knows? Absolutely. And we're sitting here, and a you know, <laughs> set falls on us. This is going to be a you know, shorter show than we had in mind. You know? <laughs> I know. I mean, it's true. I was raving about the weather in Big Sur. It's finally been good there. And then I heard there was a flooding in Las Vegas. I right. mean, it's that, you know. Yeah, right. Who knows what's next with nature? I mean, we're. And where? We're just the localized uh, forces, you know. 
Like one of my favorite philosophers, uh, Benjamin de Caceres, said, uh, "We're nature's forces dressed up, you know, or history is is force or forces dressed up, you know, as people, that kind of thing." So I think it's it's fun to think of it that way, you know. Why do you think it? It seems like not that's just not, fun, but interesting, you know. Yeah. But why do you think it's it's, it's seems in some ways, uh, or it has been, let's say, difficult for people to have that experience and that knowing and that fluidity in their yeah. lives? Yeah. Well, I think we're you know, as you know, the population problem is enormous. People are thrown into their defenses. You know, there's a survival thing. There's the economic pressures. There's all the health madness. You know, it's like on and on and on. People are really put into a crunched kind of position. So then you're into your survival instincts and and uh, fear, fear, absolutely, yeah. and intimidation. Fear is different when you're having a fear experience. It's hard to be really fluid. That's fluid-y. absolutely true. It just freezes you. Right. So all of that is fed, you know, just by what's going on in the world. And um, what was the question, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> you went fine. Oh, you know, yeah. So it's kind of like you know, you're living way, in that kind of world. Right. You're, you're the other energy is not fostered, or, you know. So that's why it's that so important what you're now? doing. Yeah. Do you see that? I mean, because you know we do have people coming in from all over the world every couple of weeks. You know, so that's we hear true. you know that's reports true. from we all bomb over. them and then we save them. Yeah. Right. And then we rebuild them. <laughs> oh, God. But uh, yeah. it seems to me there's you know a tremendous momentum happening. You know, and, yeah. and do you see that in yeah. terms of like your book when you go to books? Do you ever leave your house? Well, sure. I know you leave it it's at least once every. Week. <laughs> but Only for I mean, you're show talking like this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, when you, yeah. do you do book signings now? Do you go to the Barnes? I've done that. So I kept it to a minimum, you know. But um, yeah, I've done some of them. Uh-huh. And, some and of them do you find wonderful. that people are you know really excited to, to yeah. be coming across that level of information? Yeah, I, I think there's a certain you know amount of people that really need that. You know. It's like they need it, it's like we need food, you know, they need that spiritual um, food, you know, and understanding of life on different levels and that kind of connection. We had a wonderful get together in Mountain View just recently, and mm-hmm. people talked about their personal lives and really got it. And we all, it was just like a, a symphony that we all had, you know, very um, wonderful and creative. And was it like but a bunch of artists and writers? All and- different people, yeah. People that were into computers and people that were into painting and. You know, just wanting to get together and talk about life on that other level, you know, where anything is possible. Mm-hmm. And um, the alchemy of possibility, you know, what it, it takes all of us, you know, all of our diversities and our differences to make everything possible. So instead of feeling uh, threatened by the diversity or difference or whatever, it's like we can welcome it. Because in our differences, we make up this, ama- you know, makes everything possible, you know. Mm-hmm. I found that out with my book because I had been working alone for years, and then uh, the last year I worked with five editors. So all of a sudden, I had all these people working with me, and it was like, and it made it possible because I couldn't have done a lot of the the work. So you start realizing in that unification, you know, on that uh, the energy coming together, you know, anything's possible. So you're finding so, after being like almost in a way isolated on your mm-hmm. hill for a long yeah. time that the, the collaborative process is just such a, a powerful process now. Just incredible. Makes everything possible. You right. know, the unification where you're all working towards something that you care about. and That passion it's, it's makes one and one instead amazing. of two, it makes it 11. I exactly. mean, you really can feel that, yeah. you know, the surge of it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and we've been talking yeah. a lot about that too, about how, you know, the collaborative process is so important that each of our individual trips has to you know, in a way, give way exactly. yeah. to, to, to the, the one, yeah. you know, exactly. and that's really starting yeah. to happen. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're ready for the uh, second set, Leslie's second set, uh, and uh, Leslie and the girls are going to sing <laughs> uh, Flying and Beyond the Bend. And now remember, these, all the songs are written by Leslie, and also before we get to that, I'd like to uh, just thank everybody for uh, all their efforts in getting on Bridging Heaven Earth and all the new cities we're on now. We're on in, we just got on twice a week in Boston. We got on at least twice a week in, in Kauai, uh, Hawaii. Uh, looks like Atlanta's coming up really soon. And we're just really excited about all your inspiration, all your love. And also, if you have any questions about, you know, Carolyn's book or when she's doing book signs or anything like that, or when Lesia or Lesia's CD or Lesia and the girls are going to be playing around maybe Santa Barbara at any time soon, call me. It's Alan at 805 
6872053. That's Alan. 805-687-2053. Okay, so Leslie and the girls are going to do Flying and Beyond the, the Bend, and all the songs are written by Leslie. So whenever you're ready.
Wow, thank you, girls. That was beautiful. Let's see in the girls. Let's see in the girls. Okay, we're back with Carolyn on the set. So you have a poem from your new book, The Alchemy of Possibility. Why don't you read that? What's it called? Is You, yeah. Is Me. That's yeah. what we were talking about. It's perfect. I just had a feeling like it was just right on for what this is all about. Um, we are the skin of all peoples, the spirit of all animals, birds, trees, plants, and flowers. We are the earth itself walking about, the sun's morning eyes, the moon's casting glow, the ever-changing mists, the life of the clouds, the waters of the sea, the dolphin's fin. There isn't anything that isn't you or me. As a granule of sand creates the beach, every blade of grass the meadow, every current and tide the seas, the heavens rains of joy, the spring fragrance abound, every sound, scent, and feeling, every pulse is the planet, is you, is me. Yeah, that is exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I just felt like I must have written it for this <laughs> evening. So, yeah, there's just no separation. I mean, we, we're definitely, there's a vibrational field that we're all in touch with, you know, at all different levels of it, and, and it changes depending on how you feel. I mean, it, it all seems very musical, and, and also the music has colors to me. You know, that's why when I paint, um, I feel that the colors are expressing different feelings. Of course, there's been books out about how green, you know, is metamorphosis and change and growth and spring and, you know, all of that. And red is passion. And, of course, it would be appropriate, all these colors of red. And then I ended up with all these colors that go with all yeah, your... Yeah, no, you're perfect. It's like, it's We're going to have to keep you here. <laughs> Either that or your outfit. I don't know. What, I know what you mean. You might have maybe. to get back up the hill, but this outfit is staying. We, we all leave things hanging around and I'll just disappear. <laughs> like some dorm room. <laughs> right? So, yeah, it's so interesting how, how color has a whole world to it, you know. See what we have here. Yeah. So it, it's all expressing the different um, uh, energy fields and feelings and and nature just seems to do such an incredible job of, of having everything work together so well, you know. In a big story, I don't know how many of you have been there, but the uh, it's such beauty and it's just ever changing. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You've been there, have you? Oh, the yeah. coast is one of my yeah. favorite places. Yeah. I mean, it used to be like every you know three or four months I drive at least one of oh. you all the way up. Yeah. It's but something. I haven't done it in a while. But it's every time I do it, it like just knocks your socks. Oh, it, it it's really like does. One of yeah. the most beautiful places in the world. It really is. Yeah. Very, very powerful and. Very, the climates can be very exaggerated. You know, we have 70 mile an hour winds, and you well, know, weren't the roads shut down for and like the roads, six? We had two or three months of roads was being it? closed. Yeah. yeah. That matter of fact, with this book, its, it's labor was really something. We had to walk around uh, mountains at night, you know, with flashlights because the, the roads were blocked and you know, boulders had fallen. You down mean for people to collaborate on this? Yeah. Well, we were, yeah, we had to yeah when we were having the images photographed in town and, and when we were doing all everything we had to do for the book, you know, that we had to do that. So, so it was quite quite a so thing. So kept in shape. Sometimes, over that you know, sometimes we were ten, twelve hours around the mountains at night. You just you think you'd made it to Highway One, and then you'd look and the whole mountain had come down, and then you had to drive all the way back. So. Um, you have different challenges in the country than you do in the city, you know, quite quite different. <laughs> but then then you have that wonderful um, dialogue with nature going on, you know, so so right there for you, you know, that direct energy. Yeah, I mean, even here, so, well, Santa Barbara is like a very beautiful place oh, too. Oh, it is. It's it is very because beautiful. you have a, a yeah. thin strip of la land between the oceans and the mountains. So That's right. Yeah. But I mean, I try to get by the mountains. You know, mm -hmm. or the ocean almost every day, just yeah. because the expanse of it. But you live, yeah. it's like, so you look out your window and that's all you can see on some Yeah, well, yeah, direction. once I get outside, yeah, the house, the views are limited. But um, once I'm outside, it's, it's like a 360 degree all the way around, you know. So um, it really has an enormous effect your environment on the way you think and, you know, where where you are, you know, your attitudes and everything. I think it's much harder when you're living in a crowded you know, low ceiling kind of environment. You know, like the nights, were, you know, lately the nights have been just beautiful in Big Sur, and I've been, the trees look so tall, you know, and the mm -hmm. skies look so majestic so fast, and endless, yeah, you know, right. and it keeps you in that frame of mind, you know, 
of the in infinity of things. Exactly. How it just keeps oh, yeah. going forever, you know. Then you have weeks when you've got you're fogged in, and then you have to find another way to to be expansive, you know. Right, and you, read you do that by painting and reading and meditating. Yeah, continual reading of people that are inspirational on that very, um, you know, philosophical and spiritual level. Name a few. That well, have I, moved you I'm rereading people that you know have been known for quite a while, like Herman Hesse. I've gone back to him. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and Actually, we just did the really? thing, uh, the ten. Well, it was just ten spiritual yeah. books that mean a lot, and Hess was on there. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, it's just no Carlos like Castaneda and uh -huh. you know, the yeah. usual, yeah. usual stuff. Yeah, it's just so important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the people that really like to explore those interior labyrinths, you know, like Rilke, Marie Rainier Rilke, and um, Uva, well, they and D.H. Lawrence. Down the, they and, break down know. the boundary of our knowing, so if, yeah. if the boundaries are down, then only the infinite exists. You know, That's it's just, right. It's just yeah. our conception of things that holds the boundaries right. in our ideas. Right. Well, yeah, too many concepts and like you said earlier, why, you know, aren't people more open to, to being more open? You know, why is there all that and it is out of a defensive mode, you know, just mm -hmm. getting into like a conditioned defensive mode. And, mm -hmm. and then later on maybe people start opening up and realizing that their lives can't expand and can't grow and they can't be progressive if they limit themselves that way. You know. You know, it's just so, so much we've been, you know, been, we've been hurt a lot as human beings, you know, and oh, felt, absolutely. Yeah, and we feel separate. So when you feel separate from that, which you know is you know, yeah. big. Yeah, the end of the source, yeah. The yeah. End, then, yeah. I mean, how can you not feel protective and, and not open? That's almost right. Almost more no, like that's, this, that's in a, a very ball important of protection. Point. Absolutely. I have a poem that I wrote years ago called Severed from Your Source, you know, and it was about plants and seeing them drift at sea and you know, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. But it, it's true of people. Once you get severed from the larger um, embrace of things, you know, the larger understanding of things, uh, everything creates a lot of anxiety. I think that's why, you know, one of our most contagious diseases, you know, is anxiety and fear, because it's like, a, it's contagious, you know, you start... And so is love. It's just that oh, we absolutely. need to make the momentum yeah, you know, we turn around. Yeah, we need to emphasize I mean, the You know, why situation. books like yours and hopefully bridging, you know, the shows yeah. are... You know, get into more places. Absolutely. And, you know, somebody was saying to me today, and I'm sure somebody would say that about your book. And mm -hmm. what is your book, or what is your show about? And we say it's about the vibration of love, just putting that yeah. out. You know, yeah. without, you know, a certain sect or a certain religion. No, no reason, just love. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, because it, it definitely, you know, love begets love. You know, like attracts like. Once you set that up, it's like music. It just keeps, you know, expanding. And then, you know, bringing, having like tumbleweed effect of collecting all those energies with it. So it just takes off and keeps going, you know, once it goes. Yeah, it's really an exciting so, time because yeah. more and more of that is happening. I, I mean, think so, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it feels very much um, like it's, it's, you know, accelerating, like it's. Yeah, we've had a lot of people on the show yeah. who talk about the acceleration happening because, you know, coming into the new millennium and, mm -hmm. you know, just different energies coming down and just. It's time for that to happen. It's time for the, yeah. the oneness to be more manifest, for the collaborative po process and all our connections to be, you know, just like reconnected, even though they were never separate, yeah. but, yeah. you know, for us to recognize the Absolutely, connection. yeah. The awareness is, is the beginning of it all, of all the possibility, you know, being aware of it, and, you know. Yeah, it's very encouraging that you have a show like this and the people are doing, what, you know, the people that I know, what they're doing, they all care about other people, they care about making things better, you know, on every level. You know, it's a whole caring about people, as you said, from love and, you know, interest in humanity, and certainly that the planet needs it desperately, you know. You know, it's interesting, but so. I, I think what you've been saying earlier is that once you have the experience that we're all connected, mm -hmm. it's like it's like you're not caring about someone else, you're just caring about you, who happens to be in a dolphin body or another mm -hmm. body or, or a tree. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's almost selfish in a way, but it's like when we're all one, yeah. it's like everything's... So we're not. Yeah. We just. No, I know what you're saying. We're love manifest in a way, rather than. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, it's like you have around you what you care about. You know, if you want to know who somebody is, you can see what they collect around around them. You know, because it's like, uh, well, one of my sayings is atoms mirror atoms, which is like saying that same thing. We kind of clone ourselves in everything that we do. You know, it just shows who we are, and we keep the energy keeps multiplying. You know, going out there. And um, you could think of it, you know, like it's a grand resoundance or symphony where all of those energies are going out there and it's creating a new wave, as they call it, or, you know, energy waves, you know. 
and um, I'm sure it's true. I mean, I know it's true on a, on a, a physiological level that that is really, you know, true. So I'm understanding it on a more poetic, you know, level. But it's like it's obviously happening, you know. It's well, a true. It's a I, mean, law I can of feel it in me. Oh you know, yeah, like that acceleration yeah. is happening, yeah. and that openness to collaborate, that openness to, mm -hmm. you know, to not be confined to what I would think. You know, I have less ideas that I have to fight. You know, yeah, you know, exactly. fight for. Exactly. Yeah, you're like liberated from right. from being held back from from the great mystery of things. You know, which is where all the wonder is and, and the all joy. the possibility and the joy. Right. Yeah. Because if you got to be right, I mean, how oh, joy is oh, that? I know. Be? I mean, it's just such a battle. You I know. know. It's a waste of energy. Right. I know. What is right? Absolutely. I think when you start realizing there isn't just one reality to things. That everything is multifaceted, and there's many different views you can take of a so-called reality. And they will over what we call and, time. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you look at things from a multi-dimensional aspect, you know, you see all the possibilities inherent in everything that's going on around you, practically. You know, or, or anything you want to focus or that you're interested in. You know, it's not just this or that. It's like all of it. You know, and more. You know. You, let you, you don't. Go yeah, you don't. You never know. It's just out. You exactly. know, it could be anything. Yeah. It's the alchemy of possibility. It's just right. anything's possible. But you don't know, and you don't. It doesn't matter if you know. Right, and you're not closing yourself off with "I have to know" or, as you said, "have to be right" or anything else. You know, you're going back to that unconditioned place where everything is possible, and your mind is really open. And that only like exists that. in each moment. You have to That's be true. in the moment. Absolutely. I mean, it, once yeah. you expand out and you have an identity, I'm a painter, I'm a flat. If oh, you believe yeah. that, I mean, you could write something on the credits. Yeah. You know, it says maybe under me, Alan Host, or whatever, <laughs> if they spelled it right. Alan Hest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know what you mean. But I mean, yeah. I mean, that's not who I am. Yeah, I mean, it would be very limiting right. to put yourself into a definition right. or a frame of any kind. Yeah. Right. Even though we do it as, yeah, as just we as put a on way clothes of, here. Sort of an it's abstraction. It's like having an abstraction of yourself or something. But um, it's coming from, you know, such a larger place, thank goodness, you know. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, like so. how people try to make things reasonable. Every, you know, what's oh, re yeah. I say we're hurtling through space on a ball. Uh, yeah. Now, what's reasonable after that? I mean, yeah. the whole thing is unreasonable. That's right. This whole experiment we're living in is unreasonable. Exactly. So, why would we yeah. think we can cut a piece out of it and say, "Oh, now yeah. that's reasonable"? You know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> even that word is is disturbing. I know this Caceres, uh, this philosopher, called it like the ultimate heresy. You know, to start talking about rationality and reason. You know, it's like blasphemous, you know. I mean, it's silly. Like, come you know. on, you know, it's all a hallucination. We're, we're creating all of this, you know, yeah. all the, the illusions and all the... But um, if it feels right, it, you know you're going in the right direction. Right, okay? that's, that's to the To really the trust indicator. your instincts and your intuition and your deeper feelings. And how does it make your heart feel? How does it make your being feel? You know, do you, then you know, that, you know, what track you're on. And mm -hmm. you can trust it that way. Right. So I think it's really an important point. I mean, so you feel like... Follow your joy in a sense. I mean, if I can make you know, It's Joseph student. Campbell said, oh, yeah, follow, said? Your follow your yeah, bliss. Yeah, yeah. Did he? I couldn't I tell. I think he did. Well, you know, as much as... He looked you know. a little serious. <laughs> well, he was very academic. Right. Very academic. Very, yeah. Either and he left was, brain or right brain. I don't know. I don't think he ever got the left. balance. So I know. Just, you know. I know. Well, he always you know, looked a little stiff to me. I know. I don't know if he exactly followed his bliss all the time. <laughs> Well, I think we're sort of plagued by our capacity sometimes. We're so good at something, you know, that we it's become hard to surrender. a slave or something, you know. Right. We're just, so he was no, so it's just, good it's, We're so used to it and it's so yeah. natural for us. Yeah. Even though it's holding us back, you know, it's, it's helpful up to a point. And yeah. then it's like, But it could who become cares? a tyrant too, yeah, you know. Cares? It's like creativity. If you're so smart. Yeah, you know? exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. Create, get, creativity can get you and just ensnare you and work you to death, you know. And here you're talking about, oh, I'm liberated, I'm this, right. I'm that. Then you can end up with with um, just being taken over by cre you know this creative thing, and then when it's and you're not even you, enjoying doing it anymore. Yeah, it becomes like this yeah. you know, ritual or like you you know, I have to finish you. this painting. Who cares? Well, I know that does happen life, sometimes. I mean, will life go on another day if Carol doesn't? Fit? <laughs> I know, and I remind I myself of that. <laughs> you know, but sometimes it it can be very torturing. So I mean, art is like life. You go through everything that goes on in life. You know. 
tortured by your own creations, you know, enslaved by, you know, <laughs> the divine, you know, all the, you know, it's like you find Seemingly. yourself, you, know, you think you know all these things and then you, you feel like, oh, it's all the opposite right now, you know. Well, that's why, you yeah. know, after you get that after a while, you, you don't have to, like, get so behind each one. You realize yeah. that two hours later, you're going to think the opposite. <laughs> so take it easy. I you know. know, yeah, you do. You yield to the, um, to the movie, you know, what feels like a movie sometimes, you know, and you get that other perspective where you don't take it so seriously. Or you just say, okay, it'll change. You know, I'm going through this right now, but it'll it'll be different. You know, soon, because it's it's like creativity and life. I mean, they, you have all the the birthing and the dying and the renewal and the regeneration. You keep going through all these cycles, just like nature. I mean, it isn't like unless you're more mechanical in your work or something, where you just work at it every day the same way. Maybe some people are made that way, but for me, it's a whole and they're called machines process, like this. You know? Well, well, that's true, and there's a lot of that, as you know. That's what we're encouraged to be like that. Right. And even a lot but, of the, you uh, know, even the spiritual paths of the religions, we talk a lot. You know, it's more the form is more important than the experience. I know. So that's true. Us, like, hello. <laughs> What's this about? <laughs> I know. It's so weird. It makes you realize how much of the world really runs on a technical, mechanical level, and that you know some of us are made you know to be on the fringes where we're doing something completely in an opposite yeah, way from what's like, going on you around you. Like off the fridge, like <laughs> kind of hanging off you know by a fridge like, oh, you know shit. something. Yeah. Holy I God. know with the they way the world's going. They both got their dark glasses off. Of the, who can tell what these two lunatics are up to? Holy Christ! We used to be on thirty stations. After this show, we're down to about eight or nine. Thanks for coming on, Carol. I appreciate it. You've cost oh, us. Hysterical. We've worked 21 years for 21. Now, just, we could take the dope with the glasses, but now we've got somebody else. Oh, God. Well, I mean, nature creates us no, to don't. be the way we are, you know? And, and um, we're all needed, you know? Even the, even the, as my friend the sculpture calls us oddballs, he says, you and I, he says, we're the oddballs, you know? He says, everybody else is, is whatever, you know, I don't know about that. There now. are a lot of oddballs <laughs> around. When you get to know okay. people, Look around this like, set, we got an oddball crew. It's like there. people can act like they're normal, but when you get to know them, you know, everyone's an oddball in their yeah, own way. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, actually, we were saying in the break, not not necessarily about less here to girls, but yeah. we, I leaned over <laughs> and I said, you know, this is a strange species, this human species. And, oh, and Carolyn just laughed. It's like, yes. Yeah, that was so true. I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, we're all created like, like unique and different kinds of creatures. And then I feel more comfortable about the whole thing when I think of it as like, well, we're unique creatures, you know, living in this zoo, you know. In this it. incredible, weird experiment. I theory. know. It's Somebody's it's definitely made this. This is definitely an joke. experiment. Right. I, know. I mean, I guess the word in, in, I don't know, Hindi, one of those words, yeah. Leela, is something like God's joke. We're uh, part of God's it joke. It really feels like that. I mean, at its best, it's, it's a wonderful joke, you know. Like Henry Miller said, you know, you can either think of life as a tragedy or a comedy. So you might as well one eat. Yeah, I think humor is like the ultimate, you know, high. <laughs> well, I think you know, it, it's like how we see the whole thing. I mean, if we see it as a game that we're playing, I mean, we're playing. We're, we're in a sense, yeah, children hopefully. playing. Yeah, childlike. That's the best part of creativity yeah. is playing and inventing. And I mean, that's really what it's about. You know, like I once was kind of playing, painting, playing um, at the uh, Julia Pfeiffer Park. I don't know if you've been there near the waterfall, it's just beautiful. And these kids were standing around, and they said, what are you doing, you know? And uh, they were fascinated. I think you better finish up. Oh, We've got about anyway, five so seconds. Just that, you know, that we're not encouraged to experiment. All right. But here's to it. <laughs> Find the love. It's all out there. It's within you. Good night. If you have any feelings about it, call us. We love you. God bless you. Good night. Thank you.